What's up everyone? This video is the first video of a series that I'm doing on do-it-yourself solar. And this video is gonna cover how I mounted and built the structure for these solar panels. So I have six plus another four right here in the side yard. So you don't have to have a lot of room if you kinda think about what you're doing and, and get creative. So I've got a total of 10 panels right here in the side yard that catch plenty of sun. And I also have another four here in the backyard. And that gives me a total of 14 panels. I have more, but they're not mounted right now based on where I currently live and what location is available to me. But this gives you an idea of how you can get these up in your yard. Now, throughout this video, I will discuss all the details of how I did this. I went with an affordable, cost-effective way of getting these mounted. This is a temporary setup. So you'll see in the video, I discuss this. If you wanted this to be more permanent and look nicer, you could always go with a better quality wood that's been pressure treated for outdoor weather. You could always paint with the several coats of paint to help protect this wood as well. Um, design wise, the design works really well, but you may trim it up cleaner where you don't have any overhang and it's just all tucked in nice and neat. Spend a little more time on it if you want, but I just wanted to do something that's a nice design, fairly simple and gets these up. All right, so let's get into it. So I'm working on the legs that will mount my solar panels. Uh, this is the structure that the solar panels will be mounted on. The one I'm building will be set for a 20 degree angle. That way I maximize both winter and summer for my location. Uh, depending on your location, you may wanna make a different angle, but here's how I'm doing it. So one leg is 48 inches and I've got my 20 degree cut. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and do one more. These will be the backs. You will see as we go how this actually fits in. So next I will just measure uh, a 20 degree cut, which on my, so you can use a variety of tools to do this, but if I just go to 20, and then I'm gonna go out a little past my length. So my length is 48 inches, so I'm gonna go out a little bit past it, get my cut, and then I'll do a straight cut on the other end, giving me a 48 inch long and a 20 degree cut. All right guys, to keep this real simple, I'm using some uh, Craig HD pocket holes. So I'm using two and a half inch pocket hole screws and the HD pocket hole jig. That way it just got a little bit more something to it to hold on to this and support it out here. But you can see I'll put one there and then come down over here, put the other one here, and that should give me a basic 20 degree angle. I now, with the Craig HD, put two pocket holes on this leg and two pocket holes on that leg. And you can see uh, this leg was 48 inches. This one is a 22 and a half inch cut with a 20 degree angle. And so as you can see, I've got a 20 degree angle on this, which is the way I want my solar panels to be. So now I will work on a second one of these and then the cross members and then show you how I actually attach these. I have these brackets that I found and you can use whatever brackets you want but these seem to be a good option because what I will be able to do is put it in there and adjust it as need be a little bit so it will go right against wherever the wood is. So since we're doing multiple brackets on multiple pieces, this gives us a little bit of flexibility. So. Um, what I did is I set these up, kind of centered them, so you can see by marking where this board's gonna go, this will connect all the way across, and I marked out for another mounting point, the mounting point on this panel, and the mounting point on this panel. So, I'll do the same thing on the other side, match it up, and then I will go ahead and create some pocket holes, most likely, and connect these cross beams to give the main part of the structure. All right guys, here's an update of where I'm at building the solar panel frames. And I just secured some extra supports, as you can see over here. In the middle here, that way it supports the weight across these longer 10 foot beams that stretch across. And I put some 
boards between these to make it secure too, that way it can handle the weight load of the panels. It doesn't have to deal with a lot of movement, so this should be secure enough. Where I did heavy duty pocket holes, I also went ahead and added a little extra more structural support. Bolted it to my panel where there was a hole. Four points, I touched it across these cross members, which in turn are supported between each other. A little extra support here and there. And here's some support here and then right here as well to just really secure this down. Here's a look at the full completed first section of panels. I have six panels here. As you can see, they're getting plenty of sunlight right now. And a smaller section here so it allows just enough room so I can open and close this gate as needed. And that's it, so I get another four panels here. That means that I did not have to hook up to the house and I've got 10 panels alone set just out on this side yard. And then I'm looking at a potential other places to put a few more panels just to maximize how much energy I can get. And here's another look. Again, this is a frame that's built for temporary purposes. This is not pressure treated wood. I did not uh, build re extra reinforcements, just enough that I know this is gonna last me another year or two. And that's all I need it to be. Uh, we won't be here permanently. And so there's no reason that for the added expense of uh, in the future, I may do a video showing how to build this, obviously one with pressure treated lumber, or at the very least, several coats of primer and paint to protect it, and two, maybe building it with some, some channel and some adjustable um, metal setups. That way you can actually rotate, adjust these to catch the optimal amount of sunlight, depending on what season you're in, whether it be summer or winter. And so that would be more of a permanent uh, quality build, whereas this is just a quick way of building inexpensively. You know, it's just, it's a handful of two by fours and some screws and you can get your panels up, but this is just a temporary setup. I want to reinforce that because I wouldn't want somebody to build this and then wonder why in a few years, possibly their wood is degraded to a point where they're going to have to make repairs. If you wanted this to be a permanent setup, you would use pressure treated lumber and make sure you're using exterior screws only and perhaps even build some metal reinforcements in here, maybe some adjustments. And I might do a future project on that, but this project was just do it yourself. The first part of this series on how to just handle doing your solar panels and get them set up so you can use them. Uh, no permit needed in my area because I'm not attaching to the building, to the roof and no permit because I'm not tying into my electrical company. Check your local area so you can just do this at home as your own home project. So let me get this buttoned up where I get these other panels on here and I'll show you a finished look of that. So just so you see how simple this hardware is, all it basically is is a bracket, a bolt with some washers, and then another uh, nut with the washer. So. How simple it is, you just put the bolt and the washers there on the back side of it. And then I will take and hook up this bracket like that. And how it will work is it'd be like that. And then I will put another washer and another nut on. like that and then I chose this bracket because it's got this slot so you can see all I got to do is slide down that and then I'll tighten it up it's the same thing for up here they're in here and then all you got to do is tighten these up and tap a screw so that's why I built this frame this way where it's got the cross members going across because then I can just mount these up and attach these little brackets on so before I tighten these down and secure them and put my other panels up here. What I've been doing each time I put these panels on is once they're in the sunlight, I'm testing them. And I'm just gonna set it to volts. Connect the positive. Well, it doesn't really matter, but in this case, just so you're always consistent, I connect the red, which is my positive, to the positive there. 
and I'll connect my negative to this negative here. Right now you can say it's 32, 37. So I have good voltage. And I just want to do this first. One, that's how you can check, make sure that your panel's working. And two, that way you don't spend the time to actually secure these all down and then find out that one's not working or something's not right and have to go back through and remove it again. So that's how you test. Make sure you have voltage with your voltmeter on your panels to make sure that they're live. All right, guys, so here's a close look at the bracket system. So I've got the bolt and the washers to lock it onto the panel and the nut and lock washer underneath to lock this bracket on, tightened it down. You can choose one or both of these. Just like that. All right, so I pre-drilled it. Now I'm going to tighten my screw in. Don't want to go too tight and strip anything out. And that's it. All right, guys. So here's a last look for this video regarding the solar panels. I've got six up here, and I've got these four panels which give me a total of 10 over on the side yard. And these are at a 20 degree for maximum irradiance as far as year round. And over in the backyard, up by this back wall, I put up another four. So you've already seen the breakdown of the larger stands that I built for the solar panels on the side yard. But this is in the backyard, two sections of two, four panels. And instead of a 20 degree, I did it with a 10 degree angle and so I've just got my legs cut at 10 degrees and a support beam going across and then the next beam that goes the other direction which allows my attach points with the brackets just as the same design as before. You can see connect here and so I just found the height that I needed to build within this planter bed staked it down so it won't be front heavy it won't tip over it's nice and secure wind won't blow it over and i've got a nice angle that's going to catch as much sun as possible based on the direction this is facing and that's about it for getting these solar panels up now you can go online and use various websites solar irradiance websites uh, solar angle websites research your particular location to decide what angles and what directions will best work for your setup. So I had some panels facing west and others facing north and based on my location and where my fence line was, I chose the angle that would give me the maximum solar irradiance available for both winter and summer. By utilizing the websites and looking at the data for your location, and what direction you can face your panels, you'll have a better understanding of how you can actually do your build using the information I provided in this video. So that wraps up getting your panels mounted. And in future videos, we'll be going over the wiring to connect those panels to your chargers, which these are all in one charger inverter units. We'll be going over inverters and your wiring inside here, along with fuses, and your power storage with your batteries and your paneling and how you can run this wire out and power things such as I'm currently powering a hot tub and some garage power tools. So stay tuned for the next videos coming up in the series. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next one.